I love going to the cinema. Doesn't matter if it's a giant multiplex that charges you way too much for a ticket and the food, um, or if it's a small independent cinema uh, where it's nice and cozy and they still run the films on analog film stocks rather than digital. It even looks better, to be honest, when it comes to those elements, as uh, some cinema lovers will fight about. Uh, as long as the lights go down, though, and the, the music you know, starts and people are very good about only wrinkling and opening their food packaging during the loud moments and not the soft moments, I'm generally pretty happy. It's, it's the cinemas, I, I love going to it. But unfortunately, in my 33 years on this planet, there have been times where the movie experience has been uh, so unenjoyable that I have actually walked out of the cinema. After paying my money for the experience and for the overpriced food, I have walked out. These are the three films I've walked out of in my time. The first film was, and this will hopefully come as no surprise, the third Mummy film led by Brendan Fraser, 2008's The Mummy, Tomb of the Dragon Emperor. There's not much to say about this film that um, is a mystery about why I walked out of it. I loved the first two Mummy films. I thought Brendan Fraser and Rachel Weisz had great chemistry. Um, the setting for this third film moved from Egypt and the Middle East to China and Jet Li was the titular mummy of, you know, the title, the Dragon Emperor villain person. And look, there was, you know, Brendan Fraser was trying really hard in this film, as he always does, I imagine, but it just couldn't sell it to me. I think one of the big turning points, other than a lot of the convoluted plot elements and the leaps of logic that granted films like this have, but just felt like a bit more of a stretch, there was one sequence where they were in the Himalayas and one of the Chinese ally characters that they have calls upon a bunch of savage but friendly yetis to guide them through. And, well, I mean, just because you have CGI doesn't mean you always have to use it. I think we know that now. But then when it was getting so good, and um, they put it in everything. And that, that was a big part. Like, I just felt like too much at once and was giving me a headache to be honest but we, we did manage me and my friend who I went to see it with I was about 20 years old at the time we managed to make it through most of the film but um by by even before the last battle I was just like let's get out of here because this is doing my head in and um and obviously Rachel Weiss wasn't in it as well and, and her and Brendan Fraser's chemistry was a big part of what made those first two mummy films really great so that was another disappointing turn no no shade on the actress who had it replace her role but I kind of would have thought if she can't do it or doesn't want to do it just don't put her in it make it work but um yeah that's my first film um and I don't regret walking out of it whatsoever so the mummy tomb of the dragon emperor second movie I walked out of and I'm ashamed to say this because I'm a big fan of the director but it was Terrence Malick's 2019 film A Hidden Life a film about a farmer in Austria during World War II who refuses to fight in the Nazi army and gets put to jail and I think uh, as the true life story goes um, eventually executed. Not that I saw the ending of the film though because um, I had to walk out of it. Now I'm a big fan of Terence Malick's uh, other films, mostly his earlier work Badlands, Days of Heavens. Finn Red Line was the film actually that got me into him. And I understand his style was not for everybody. And even his later films like Night of Cups, To the Wonder, and especially Song to Song have not floated my, floated my boat, as we say. This film, from reviews and festival um, reaction, was said to be a return to form to old style Malik. This whole idea of not having a script, a lot of scenes being improved. Granted, that happened in those early films I liked, but I feel like there was more of a handle on the plot and characters, um, as such as they were. But with his recent run, and with this film, it just feels totally improvised. The camera movements aren't as smooth. They're very... Just, I don't know. The, the first half of the film I loved, all the scenes in the village and his family life were great. I thought they were quite ev evocative and emotive, but as soon as he uh, gets sent to prison and that happens... 
there's this feeling in me of this, this repetitive imagery and you know too much voiceover and and stark repetitive cutting of um, scenes that kind of went on. It felt like it went on and on and on. Now, granted, I think I was only maybe like twenty minutes away from actually finishing the film, but it, it just the swirlingness of the camera, the sw uh, the swooningness of the voiceover, and just how it all was put together and worked. I just I just couldn't handle it anymore, and I'm, I'm, I feel bad saying that because I I turned to Max work and some of his approaches to filmmaking is really interesting to me and I, I really like aspects of that approach but I just couldn't handle uh, this film and, and I wonder if I'd be able to handle any of his other films um, even Tree of a Life Tree of Life was a bit of a stretch for me to be honest and even though I know there's beautiful elements in it and it's work of cinematic genius to a certain level the older I get the more I need concrete plot and character development in a more um, managed way to really steer me through Yes, I hate to say it, but a hidden life, Ter Terry Malick. Sorry, Terry. My third film was very recent. It was meant to come out in June, I believe, this year, 2020. Uh, it was delayed due to COVID, though I think most of the other parts of the world got to see it. But here in Melbourne, um, we had a lockdown for over 100 days. Cinemas, restaurants, all that st stuff were closed. But finally, in, in early November, uh, cinemas in a socially distant way were open. And my friend and I, you know, we liked some of Christopher, Nolan, Christopher Nolan's films. I'm not, not the biggest fan, but always thought they were a spectacle that deserved a cinema to be seen in. And, um, God, this was the movie Tenant, and it was horrible. It was so convoluted and unintelligible that it made me frustrated watching it. We gave it about an hour and 15 minutes. It's about a two and a half hour film before we decided to leave, which was a shame. It was the first movie... I've seen since lockdown and I really wanted it to be an enjoyable experience um, but my god it was just not uh, there's something about the soundtrack as well we could barely hear any of the dialogue that, that was happening so plot elements you know it, it didn't you couldn't understand what the hell was going on and once once you did understand what was going on you didn't care the, the characters the motivations for doing these things were paper thin the plot what of what there was feels like it's ideas in search of a plot rather than anything solid and it just felt like a series of set pieces because admittedly he is good at filming and putting together but you need to make me care about what's going on I, I just didn't care and for me and I'm a very emotive um, viewer even if it's an action film or whatever I think you need to care about what's going on the characters or the plot or the overarching um, thing that's going on you need to care and I just didn't care and it was frustrating and me and my friend, and we, and as I said, we loved, we've at least maybe if not liked all of his previous films, we've enjoyed the spectacle of them, enjoyed uh, going to them. It never felt like a wasted dollar to pay to go see Christopher Nolan's films, but yeah, Tenant. I can't recommend it. I just can't recommend that film, and I, I'd be happy to be proven wrong about that and maybe watch it again in, in a different headspace and maybe with a, a better mix of that audio, but oof, yeah, Tenant. It's the first Christopher Nolan film I've seen where I'm just not in, even interested in watching it again. That's the three films I've walked out in my 33 years of life from the cinema. Please tell me in the comments below what films you guys have walked out of and why. I'd be happy to see what they are. And look, if you disagree with me about me, about why I walked out of these particular films, feel free to tell me why I'm completely wrong and why I should give these films another chance. So I doubt many people will be saying about uh, Tomb of the Dragon Emperor, but they could that could have its fans, so I'm happy to be proven wrong about that. If you like what I do here, please feel free to subscribe. I usually produce a video once a week or so, either talking about film, books, or other related media and things around that. Um, once again, thank you for listening to me, and I hope you have a good day.